Uh, howdy, folks. Dr. Freedom here with you. Time some doctor news, news from in around the universe that may or may not affect you on some level. <laughs> it just hit me. I should have should have worn my trifold hat for the last video, the highway robbery at Awesome Con, because it is. It's highway robbery. Um, to give you an example, um, I only paid $80 a few years ago for an autograph from Patrick Stewart. And that was $5 for the photo and $75 for the signature. You know, the little, they all, the little pre shot photo for him to sign. And since everybody had already been hitting him up for air to spy everything else, I, I got the one with him as Professor X. And also because I have the figure up here in the collection, I have the X Men figures. So <laughs> I can't figure out on what planet anybody feels they're worth over $200 for a signature and a photo. That's just ridiculous. Um, there were photo ops available for Patrick Stewart and all that, but it's just back then I was still, you know, deciding on what's going on and whatnot. And I figured autographs good enough in that case, because I knew he was never coming back to Ohio. And that's the only reason I, you know, paid that much. And sure enough, I was right. He's never been back to Ohio since. Um, same thing with Claudia Christian when she was here. She's never been back either. I, I don't know if it's just the fact that, um, I think she said something about, you know, she wasn't coming back for various reasons. I, I think it's just because, you know, they weren't doing as well in the autograph department, you know, that year for, you know, this coast than she was on her West Coast appearances. Also back then she'd been living half and half between, you know, California and the UK. So, uh, but all that nonsense aside, like I said, it's highway robbery. It's just plain, plain highway robbery. And that, that to me, you know, all I can say is fans, look, I know a lot of you are going to go out and spend the money anyway, because you see a lot of people see autographs and all that as a status symbol. Um, most of my autographs I got by meeting the people in person. And, and that's the main reason, you know, I usually do it. Now, I wanted to thank Elijah here, though, because a lot of people don't realize, hang on, let's skew the camera here a little bit. That in this frame right here, I had this frame sitting in a desk drawer for like two, three years, or like two years. And Elijah sent this to me from the one con. It's a placard of the death in heaven poster and it's signed by Ingrid Oliver. And I, I guess I can never thank him enough for that. So if you want to send me an autograph, I'll be happy to display it and tell you about it. I just been meaning to mention something about that for a while. I never have. Um, so, you know, most of the, about 95% of the time, I'd say I mainly collect the autographs for, you know, remembering an event and or you know the time i actually met that person so but like let's get off that let's get off the boring stuff <laughs> you're probably like right now so let's get to the stuff you're here to see let's get to the stuff you're here to look at let's start off over on cruel all right this is put up friday um dr series 10 ice warriors details emerge on the episode um this is of course done by cameron q and formerly blocked or who he had sold the site Okay, in the last edition of Empire Magazine, that, by the way, I'm just now getting a lot of stuff from the Empire Magazine article. We'll talk about that briefly. Um, you know, 335 out now. Uh, me and Moffat and the 12th Dr. Peter Capaldi have been speaking about their final series together. Um, during the interview, a number of juicy nuggets of information. And like I said, I'm going to leave this for you guys to read. because, Well, screw it. Let's go and do it anyway real quick. Okay, Empire describes the episode as a Jules Vernish spectacle. Um, scenes on Mars that features Martian mine, red sand, and a giant futuristic drill-like weapon of mysterious provenance. There's a conflict between Zulu War era British soldiers and an awakened horde of ice warriors. A pivotal three-way face-off with the Dr. British troops and the ice warrior turns on a key intervention by new companion Bill. At one point, an ice warrior is referred to as an upright crocodile. If you want to read the full interview on this shirt, but here it is out now. Um, and the thing is this, you, you click on this, you go to that site, and you mainly just get this, and it's nowhere near the full article. As a matter of fact, I showed you this one last week. It was just mainly a thing with the picture, so that's kind of like a, and then basically they say, buy the magazine, you cheap ass. Okay, Peter Capaldi explains why he's departing Doctor after four years. And, okay, I fully agree with Beefhead on this point, if you know him from the cast, the guy with the, well, the, the whiteboard. Um, I think he, I think Peter Capaldi fell on his sword and that's what he's even doing now because when he was being interviewed, I even had someone I won't discuss tell me, you know, who does, you know, been near him on set say he was more than happy to come back for series 11. And then also he was telling the press that he was, um, 
why he called that he was going to stay as long as you know they ke- they wanted to keep him. And now it turns to the terrible thing is the moment you get the job, you know you're going to have to leave it. That might just be part of my doomy, melancholic nature, but as soon as I became the doctor, I immediately propelled my mind into to this spot. But that's fine. I have never really done anything for three or four years. It's not my style, really. This was his dream job. He was wanting to be the doctor since he was a boy. And now they're feeding out this, you know, like I said, I think what it is, he's trying to go out on, you know, on a high note, you know, taking the fall, so to speak, falling on his sword, as Beef said. I I think he doesn't want to disparage the show in any way on the way out. But to me, uh, come on, that survey they put out with Dr. Mysterio, I think that had a big part to do with this. All right, David Tennant has some advice for the next doctor. Nobody cares. All right, it's part of your our cultural furniture, Doctor Who. It is a huge honor to be in the middle of it, but it's quite a responsibility as well, and it changes your life. It opens a lot of doors. I get to be in the West End. That's no due to no you know small small part to the fact that Doctor Who brought me to a new audience, but it's an undertaking, and it's desperately exciting for whoever the next person might be. But, yes, it takes a deep breath, too. Um, um, they had, When they asked him whether he'll be, you know, he knew who will be playing the Doctor next, Tenet rather coyly said, I don't, but I'd have to say, I, I'd have, I would have to say that even if I did. So the thing is, a lot of people are still pointing at Olivia Coleman as being a possibility because she's worked with Chris Chibnall. And like I said, we've seen Olivia Coleman before on the show. Remember the whole Prisoner Zero thing back in, you know, all the way back at the beginning with, uh, heck, the 11th hour. So, okay, ABC to prevent Whovian's panel show. Uh, Australian broadcaster, you know, ABC have announced a new half hour panel show that will tie into the forthcoming 10th series of Doctor Who. And it's based around fans of the show. Who will be shown on Sunday evenings from the 16th of April around 8.30 p.m. on ABC2 iView straight after the latest episode has been broadcast on ABC. And this is the Australian Broadcasting Network, not, not the American Broadcasting Corporation. Okay, not, not, all right, so not that ABC, the Australian ABC. Now, fans who wish, a part of the, you know, wish to be a part of their audience are invited to register you know, their interest here. So if you're you know, in Australia and you're anywhere near where they're going to be filming this thing, maybe you want to go sit in. All right, Mark Gatiss talks Sherlock Doctor and the League of Gentlemen at a New York Lit Fest. Um, I mainly threw this in because this is going to be his last season, allegedly, writing Doctor Who. And he does talk a little bit about that. Um, especially uh, he made a little reference there to when he appeared in the episode, the Lazarus experiment, which gets a nod by the way, in the latest death moon. Um, well, it also le- alludes to the name of a big finish audio. So it's kind of like a double nod. All right. And since he's writing his latest ice warriors on Mars, and by the way, that's what they're pretty much titling it at this point, I think um, could be his last. He told us, and basically he said, I don't think he's going to be writing any more doctor, but the same thing Moffat saying that as well. So kind of no surprise there. Temporal Logbook, Open Submission Day. Pencil Tip Publishing have announced they'll be accepting completed stories for the inclusion in the Temporal Logbook, uh, two for one day and one day only, and that's on Saturday, May 6th from noon to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And they give you all the stuff you need here right here, full submission guidelines and all that via here. Now, if you're a new viewer, keep in mind, all links to all articles you're seeing here will be given below in the description box. Sylvester McCoy is going to appear in a new play at the Edinburgh Fringe. Um, the show is in development, so exact dates for the performances at the Edinburgh Festival Fringe are not yet confirmed, but there are two performances included in Cheshire, England on August 11th and 12th this summer. And if you'd like to know more, blum, 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 here is the website link here that you need to go to. So, um, so Sylvester McCoy is still out there busy kicking it. Matter of fact, he was at Regeneration Who this weekend. He's going to be at Time Lord Expo, which is the con I'm going to. I'm going to probably host a panel there as well. Um, I'm doing a light, lighthearted panel about Kill Clara Who or Mary Sue. So, okay, an Australian family canceled their trip to Wales because the Doctor Who experience is closing. And I hate to say it, but they better get used to this happening. Um, the loss of the Doctor Who experience is going to be a major blow to local tourism dollars for Cardiff in general. Even though Rothlock Studios is there and whatnot, it's still going to be a kick in the nuts as far as you know, financial terms goes to that city. Because the Doctor Who experience has always been a major draw and attraction for an international crowd. 
and now it's going to be going by the wayside as far as we know. There had been rumors going around about plans to move it to another location in Wales, but there had been nothing, there's been nothing to back that up lately. I've been scouring the internet for anybody willing to say, okay, are they going to move it or are they just flat shutting now? There's even a rumor going around it may go to Manchester or there's another, like I said, that was the one that got shot down, of course, so don't mind that. But there's another rumor going that it may go to London. So if I hear anything that is definite, I'll pass that on to you. As far as I know, hell, I probably even heard a rumor right now it's going to frickin' Mars, okay? And <laughs> then again, it's the BBC. Nothing makes sense. Oh, all right. So Death Moon 9, by the way. Lions went out for Death Moon 9 today. I finished brushing off the final draft on the scripts for that one. So hopefully we're going to have that one, you know, recordings start coming in over this week. If I have time over this coming weekend, I have a little something scheduled for Saturday. Um, then we all, hopefully I'll have it put together and put out sometime next weekend. If not, it will be out by the following week, definitely. Okay, so everybody take care. Ta-ta. Enjoy the rest of your day. Have a good one. Later, partners. <laughs>